Father, we thank you. In this final episode, we ask that you give us your spirit to fully comprehend your word for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. In 1 Timothy 6 verse 20, we are told, Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of signs, falsely so called. In letter 78, January 20, 1900, the Spirit of Prophecy tells us, Satan's work today is that of a deceiver and an accuser. So when you see people being accused, being made responsible for deciding contrary and going by nature's remedies, by going, believing in natural immunity, they are being accused and being labeled the enemies of the state. Please. You should be able to know who is at work. Satan's work today is that of a deceiver and an accuser. The Lord declares him to be an accuser of the brethren day and night. By long practice, Satan has become well skilled in his trade of fault finding and will educate every man whom he can use to unite with him in this work. By him, many have been deceived and are moving blindfolded into paths of Satan's opening. So let's watch that image again and see how people are being accused that they are the troublers. Hello and welcome to Unheard. I'm Freddy Sayers. I'm here in Vienna, the capital of Austria. You can see the Rathaus, the parliament building just behind me. And it's an apparently ordinary, quite gloomy November morning, except it's not actually an ordinary morning because at midnight last night, a new law came into place which said that anyone who is not vaccinated is not legally allowed to leave their home except for certain prescribed reasons. In other words, it is the world's first lockdown for the unvaccinated. I wanted to come here to find out what does a society feel like where a third of the population has been kept at home in mandatory house arrest? What are the people who are walking around feel about that new reality and perhaps most importantly what does it feel like for those people stuck at home i think it comes much too late and i think i think it's very unfair of people who are not for health reasons not taking a vaccine because that's obvious you know but all the others, they're crazy. And all the trouble we have is due to those people who believe in, I don't know, the earth is flat. <laughs> so how long would you be happy for them to be stuck at home for? Uh, I don't think that will help, that's the thing. But what, is, what makes me hopeful is that now, some of those people who refuse to have a vaccine are now thinking of having second thoughts because they have no access to restaurants, they have no access to theatre or anything. And I know people like that do now all of a sudden they're in a hurry to get a vaccine. So you're not worried that a whole little part of society is just invisible now, stuck at home? If the, if the majority of society depends on idiots, then we can't be helped and that's the end of society. No, no, I don't think. We had it for everybody some time ago, so I think it's now for a special group and they should do it. No, I think it's, I think it's the right way because, uh, because um, uh, the, the um, cases are getting higher and higher and higher and the problems are the non-vaccinated people, so I'm fine with that. Isn't it true that you can still transmit if you're vaccinated? I, what, what do you mean? You can still pass the corona on. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I think everybody should do what we can do yeah. and to be vaccinated, it's the very best option we have. So everybody should do that. You're not worried? No. I'm not solidaric with these people and I believe that uh, it's a good decision from the government. So you don't feel sorry for them stuck at home? No, why I should be punished for the people who just not uh, uh, have uh, uh, the intention to be uh, uh, vaccinated and uh, integrated in our community. Do you know any? So we wanted to get out of town and talk to some people who were not being vaccinated and find out what their experience was. 
we're about to meet a couple who are both trapeze artists. They're circus performers and actors, and neither of them have chosen to be vaccinated. And because of that, they are currently in lockdown. I think this is it. Guten Tag. Hi. Hi. Hello. Is Mia home too? Yeah. Oh, great. Hi. Freddy. Nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Welcome. Thank you so much. So I am here with Mia and Chris, um, who have kindly asked us in for a cup of tea. Um, they are both acrobats and performers. Chris, you're also a fire eater. Mm, sometimes. And, and more. <laughs> and more. Um, and you have chosen not to be vaccinated. So you're caught up in this whole story. I guess the first question has to be why? Why, why not take the vaccine? My choice was in, on first hand that it's mine. I really can't understand why I should want or why I have to give the responsibility for my health in the hands of the government. Mm -hmm. This made no sense for me and especially no sense for the according to the situation. And Mia, you felt the same? Sure, yeah, uh, but for me, I think like my two main reasons are in the first place because um, I, I do believe in science Mm -hmm. at some level of course and um, I think the the way things are being handling they are not very much um, fitting to the scientific method I think science science is a lot about debate and then since the the whole crisis began everybody who spoke against uh, the government narrative was just uh, punished somehow and I think this is, it's a sign for me that uh, science has not been uh, done openly. And I think science can just be done openly. You need to hear, to hear all the many voices from the scientific community. Did you feel that the, the vaccine, when it arrived, you just didn't trust it? Or were you frightened of it? Did you think it was potentially dangerous? Or what was your... How did that fit in when it happened? The first thing was like a, a kind of a sense of strangeness. For me, it was very strange that um, from the very beginning, the vaccine was appointed as the only solution. Like, we will be free when there will be a vaccine. Like, they could not even know it. Like, if you were really making serious science, they would try to find solution in different areas. And there is not a rule who says uh, you just find a solution for a virus through a vaccine. I think they should have opened the spectrum of opportunities and research in many different areas and that was not the case at all. Like from the very beginning it was there will be peace again when there will be a vaccine. And I think this was already my, red, my first red flag because how they can possibly know. <laughs> and then yeah. When it came out, it was the second big red flag because I, I personally, I don't really trust the big pharma industry, I think. Mijo? But is it really the case? But the means of averting or dealing with it has to be in harmony with God's way. God extols nature. God has given us a immune system. What we need to do is to build it up regularly. Healthy living is a lifestyle. You don't subject people to this draconian way, which is producing no better outcome. But it's rather making things get worse. But what must be the lifestyle of God's people on earth? Must we just go along with the majority? What must be our lifetime? Our Father kids, page 317, paragraph 5. This is what Ellen White says. Jesus carried the awful weight of responsibility for the salvation of men. He knew that unless there was a decided change in the principles and purposes of the human race, all would be lost. 
this was the burden of his soul and none could appreciate the weight that rested upon him through childhood youth and manhood he walked alone learn to walk alone even if everyone is going or tilting towards one direction and how do you do, why why how what must inform us this my decision of walking alone it is the bible and the spirit of prophecy whether anyone's no matter what anyone says if the bible and the spirit of prophecy you read and they tell you exactly this is the way go the bible says in any part to do a thing in Exodus chapter 23 verse 2 so please as no one understood the mission of Christ therefore he pursued his mission alone now let's continue who do you think could be behind all this ladies and gentlemen there's a beautiful game which is being played and in our next episode which will commence the year 2023 we are going to talk about it it's a beautiful interplay in daniel chapter 11 where there is the interplay of the thesis and the antithesis so we are going to talk about that in our next episodes in 2023 so who do you think could be behind this we have been told that the third angel's message has a right arm who will enforce the mark of the beast it is the prophecy. So who is behind it? The man in white. In Great Controversy, page 570 and 571, we are told, the Pope claims to be the vicar of Christ, but how does his character bear comparison with that of this, our Savior? Hmm? Was Christ ever known to consign men to the prison or the rack because they did not pay homage, him homage as the king of heaven? You see the mindset of the prophecy? And that is the mindset of the world. Whoever does not go according to the world's dictates, you are being racked and, and, and molested and, and banned and censored and abused and castigated. This is not God's mindset. Was his voice heard condemning to death those who did not accept him? When he was slighted by the people of a Samaritan village, the Apostle John was filled with indignation and inquired, Lord, without that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them as, even as Elias did. Jesus looked with pity upon his disciple and rebuked his harsh spirit saying, The Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. How different from the spirit manifested by Christ is that of his professed vicar, the man in white that the world today adores. The Roman church now presents a fair front to the world and it, his Jesuits are working, covering with apologies her record of horrible cruelties. Let's watch, let's quickly, let's watch this video. How he's apologizing to the world. לשנאה ולכאב בעולם כולו. 
מכאן, מן המקום המקודש לך ולי, ולעוד מיליונים רבים בכל העולם, אני מבקש לפנות יחד איתכם למאמינים בני כל הדתות, להילחם בשנאה ובאנטישמיות הצומחת לאחרונה יותר ויותר. She has clothed herself in Christ-like garments, but she is unchanged. Every principle of the papacy that existed in past ages exists today. So if the third angel has a right arm, and the principle of the papacy is that of coercion, and the world is manifesting coercion and draconian will, and has set up heretics, fact-checkers, who now decide what is truth from wrong. And whoever do not go according to the official narrative is removed and deleted. Who is behind this? Ladies and gentlemen. She has clothed herself in Christ-like garment, but she is unchanged. Every principle of the papacy that existed in past ages exists where? Today. The doctrine devised in the darkest ages are still held. Let none deceive themselves. The papacy that Protestants are now so ready to honor is the same that ruled the world in the days of the Reformation when men of God stood up at the peril of their lives to expose her iniquity. Now let's continue. She possesses the same pride and arrogant assumption that lauded it over kings and princes and claimed the prerogatives of God. Her spirit is no less cruel and despotic now than when she crushed out human liberty and slew the saints of the most high she detests liberty the purpose is just what prophecy declared that she would be the apostasy of the latter times in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 it is a part of her policy to assume the character which will best accomplish her purpose. But beneath the variable appearance of the chameleon, she conceals the invariable venom of the serpent. And we are going to have that discussion because within our own ranks we hear these drugs were harmful during the days of Ellen White, during her days, the days of our forefathers. Now they are harmless. We are going to discuss that and we are going to build trends and parallels to see where we are standing in the stream of time. In the same great controversy, page 572, paragraph 3, we are told, In this generation, our generation, there are many whose eyes become dazzled by the glare of human speculations, science, falsely so called. They descend not the net. You see? You see the net? The, the net is what? Science. And walk into it as readily as if blindfolded. God designed that man's intellectual power should be held as a gift from his maker and should be employed in the service of truth and righteousness. True science supports nature. But when pride and ambition are cherished and men exalt their own theories above the word of God, then intelligence can accomplish greater harm than ignorance thus now hear this thus false the false science of the present day is there a false science the answer is yes the false science of the present day which undermines faith in the bible will prove as successful in preparing the way for the acceptance of the purpose with its pleasing forms, as did the withholding of knowledge in opening the way for the aggrandizement of the Dark Ages. So in the Dark Ages, what happened? They withheld knowledge. The Bible was destroyed. And in our time, what, what, what tool are they using? False signs. 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 False signs will prepare the way. In other words, what is the forerunner? What is the John the Baptist of the acceptance of the papacy? is four signs and what prepares the way so let's move on what prepares the way 
God prepares the way in says testimonies. Page 293, we are told, He, that is Christ, desires that the medical missionary work shall prepare the way for the presentation of the saving truth for this time. The proclamation of the third angel's message. What prepares the way? It is the medical missionary work. It is medication. And the signs being used is false signs. One, there's coercion. Two, there's artificial immunity. Three, there's drugs. Four, it is founded on the principle of deception. Five, it is persecuting in its nature. Only the papacy can be behind this. And no one else. It is only the purpose that fits, that loves, but he is working through the kings of this earth. Ladies and gentlemen, all that we want to say is that a deception has masquer- mas- is masquerading itself in the form of healing. And we are appealing and we are appealing to every one of us to wake up and realize that we are are in the final moments in this earth history so the question now we are asking is very simple the question that we are asking right now what is the ultimate agenda what is the ultimate agenda and we end that with this video. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm Laura Ingram, and this is the Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. The big vax passport push, that's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, when Joe Biden travels to meet with world leaders, it is a virtual certainty that he will agree to something that undermines U.S. sovereignty and, of course, picks our pockets. And that is exactly what happened at the G20 late last week. Emerging from the Indonesia confab, Biden, along with the rest of the group of 20 nations, released a declaration supporting the development of digital health certificates, otherwise known as vaccine passports. Now, you may recall that the angle warned about this eventuality back in the spring of 2020. Bill Gates, the Gates Foundation, are um, in favor of developing digital certificates that would certify that individuals, American citizens, have an immunity to this virus and potentially other viruses going forward uh, to then facilitate travel and work and so forth. I'm very concerned about a uh, slippery slope in terms of uh, continuing encroachments on personal liberty. Well, Bill Barr was 100 percent correct. The ultimate goal is control. But what they promise is that these digital uh, IDs will end up facilitating international travel. And, of course, it includes proof of vaccination. Translation. As long as a Democrat is president, he or she will allow the World Health Organization to dictate how we share our most private health information. And, of course, creating a central database is going to be necessary, they claim, for the greater good for your protection and, of course, for your overall benefit. But if, what if you aren't shot up with whatever they claim is necessary at any given time? Well, tough luck. Stay home. Because you're in a WHO-mandated lockdown. No travel for you. Now, the declaration also calls for the establishment of a trusted global digital health network. Doesn't that sound nifty? To prevent and respond to future pandemics. Now, the language here is broad enough to invite all sorts of mischief and intrusions into your personal data. So what could possibly go wrong, right? Well, of course, they don't see the irony in the fact that China similarly justifies its own moves to crush personal liberty with cruel lockdowns of millions of its citizens at any time an outbreak happens. The CCP orders lockdowns like college kids order pizza. Now, just today in Beijing, they announced that they were shutting businesses and schools and hard-hit districts and tightening rules for entering the city as infections ticked higher. That's in Beijing. Now, to give you some perspective, only three people in a city of nearly 22 million have died from COVID since Saturday. So they're tightening their controls in their central Henan province and Chongqing in the southwest as well. And the personal accounts of life under these lockdowns, 
They have been harrowing, actually terrifying. You cannot go anywhere. Everything's closed. Customers cannot come either. What can you do? You can do nothing. How sad it is that we have an American president who agrees to a declaration that doesn't condemn this type of subjugation of human liberty and, in fact, implicitly validates it. Because, of course, China is the master at using these digital health passports to stop perfectly healthy people from traveling, using the pretext here of COVID. Now, this is sick, and it's twisted, but it's completely predictable. Like so much of what happens in China and our elites, well, of course, they simply just look the other way. If anything, we're edging closer to the CCP's model, not moving further away from it. And by the way, they clean up the language to make it all sound so pleasant. My argument has been that there are enormous benefits to be gained from that global integration. We have to recognize the severity of the problem with refugees and right now with COVID-19. That argues for vaccination, for availability and access for everyone because we're all living on the same planet. Progressively, a lot of people would like to see there, there are two orders in this world. This is a huge mistake, even for both the US and China. We need a single global order. A single global order. And where exactly does that leave the nation state? Well, you guessed it, on the trash heap. This is why they all hate Trump so much, because back in 2016, he was the first major presidential candidate to call this out since really Pat Buchanan. But their fantasy, again, it sounds like this. What we will see is that uh, everything will be integrated into a ecosystem driven by big data and uh, driven uh, particularly by close cooperation also of governments uh, with um, uh, business, civil society. And this revolution will come at a breathtaking speed. It will be like a tsunami. It will be like a tsunami. And when COVID hit like a tsunami, Schwab saw his opening, declaring in the early months of the pandemic that the world must act swiftly and jointly to revamp all aspects of our societies and our economies. And we know what followed. The shuttering of churches and schools, masking toddlers, mandating vaccines, and now, looks like requiring vaccine passports for travel. Let's have a digital health certificate acknowledged by WHO if you have been vaccinated or tested properly, then you can move around. So for the next pandemic, instead of stopping the movement of the people 100%, you can still provide some movement of the people. Some movement of the people. And it's not just your movement the government wants to restrict. It's your financial privacy and freedom as well. Now, back in March, Biden signed an executive order announcing what is his obvious desire to pursue a digital dollar to eventually replace cash altogether, claiming, of course, that the goal is to facilitate easier transfers of money, easier payment systems, and capital flows in the international financial system. Again, sounds kind of cool, right? Well, nothing good's going to come of this. Tracking your health data to tracking your finances, it's all of a piece. The key issue here is whether Americans are going to make their own decisions, their own decisions about important issues, or are we just going to farm them all out to international organizations? We've already established that the left basically hates the American system, so, of course, they're all too happy to allow other countries boss us around as much as possible. But the goal is always to keep our voters on the sidelines, away from the levers of power. And, of course, China and Europe, they're fine with this. Now that their midterms are over, Biden and John Kerry felt emboldened not only to agree to these vaccine passports, but to commit our taxpayers to spending billions of dollars for climate equity payments to emerging nations. Now, who, who voted for that on Election Day? If the voters in Pennsylvania and Arizona, if they thought that this is what John Fetterman and Mark Kelly supported, maybe they would have voted differently. And voters in Georgia, they should realize right now what's at stake here. 
because you know that Raphael Warnock, he's totally on board with this theft of American money and freedom. The angle believes that all important decisions should be made here with the consent of the governed, not by Brussels or any global entity. Fortunately, we have this thing it's called the Constitution, which tells us which laws that Americans actually have to follow, the laws that are made here by our duly elected officials. And that's the angle.